Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, to start this video off, I want to address the elephant in the room, which is my makeup and my outfit. I am doing an aesthetic video that is coming out next Friday, so stay tuned for that. This is a sneak peek for the first look, and I feel very pretty, so I like it. <laughs> for today's video, it's going to be the most serious video I've ever done. Um, I've kind of avoided making these. Even though I want my channel to heavily surround mental health, it's really hard to talk about. And today I'm going to do just that. Today I'm going to talk about eating disorders. So I'm going to start this little chat off with talking about myself for a minute. <laughs> um, and my personal experience with EDs. So I have suffered from bulimia since the age of 10. And I'm coming up on my 19th birthday, so it's been almost nine years um, and it has affected my life greatly. I have also suffered from binge eating disorder which although it hasn't affected my life as much as my bulimia it is still just as severe. It is baffling to me to think that a 10 year old could develop an eating disorder. Now at the age of 18 and I look back at 10 year olds I could never imagine them doing the things that I did and thinking the things that I thought about myself. <laughs> I have had negative self-image issues since I can remember. Like, even as a child, I remember always hating myself and hating my body and hating the way I looked. I was always really tall and way bigger than any other girl. I was the tallest person in my grade up until like 8th grade, including the guys. And that took a damper on my body confidence when I was so tall and I was very built like you've seen my body in videos now I was always very strong and athletic but I didn't look like everyone else and I would get called fat and I got bullied for my weight when I was younger and I really just felt so shitty about myself. I I loathed myself. I couldn't express how much I hated how I looked and I couldn't talk about it and I didn't realize it was just not my fault and I took it out on myself. I developed bulimia after the summer of my 10th birthday. I hit it from everyone I know up until the age of like 15, 16 and it affected my life very negatively whether it be pretending I had to go to the bathroom right after supper or devouring a bunch of snacks and then leaving my eating disorders controlled my life and it made me lie to all the people I cared about and looking back, that's one of the worst parts of it. The process of learning to love myself and my body and how I look has been a long road and I'm definitely not there yet, but I'm trying really, really hard. And one thing I want you guys to know is that recovery is not linear. If you have a setback, that doesn't mean you're not in recovery. You can do it. I continue to struggle with my bulimia and my binge eating disorder. Although I'm very happy to say I am in recovery, I do have setbacks and recovery isn't linear. You're not just going to wake up one day and never feel the things you felt and never do the things you did because that's just not realistic. And if that's your goal, that's okay. But having a more attainable goal and being able to do certain things again is so important. My recovery has been going well. Um, I did have a setback a couple days ago, which was rough. Um, sorry. But I have grown so much as a person and my self-image has definitely improved. I've learned to accept myself and my body and I think that's been 
one of the biggest parts of recovery for me but since i have still suffered from my eating disorders i do experience symptoms such as disordered eating thoughts disordered eating um and then the aftermath of what happens to your body when you do these things so something that i personally struggle with because of my bulimia is extreme acid reflux and chest pain so if you don't know what acid reflux is it's basically like the acid in your stomach flowing back up and it causes me to unintentionally um sorry if this is a little graphic this whole video kind of is but it forces me to unintentionally vomit a lot and whether it be just stomach acid or if i had eaten or drank in something drinking or if i drank something it might come back up and that is because my esophagus is severely damaged from my bulimia and it doesn't function properly which also causes just overall gastrointestinal issues so i get really bad stomach pain and nausea those are some symptoms that i experience pretty severely but even though I experience those symptoms, I still know that recovery is the way to go. And it's, it's what's best for me. And I know that I'm going to keep working at it. And today I'm officially three days clean from um, purging, which is good. And it was, it was a big setback when I was nearly 100 days clean. And it was rough, I'm not going to lie. It was hard, and after I did it, I immediately regretted it, and I hated myself. Something that I experience a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much my story, but I did put a poll on my Instagram and got you guys to ask me questions, so I picked out six here that I'd like to answer. So the first one is actually really important to me because I've experienced this very recently, and it's what do you do after a bad day to get back on track? and my first thing is when i slip up it's normally at night my binge eating disorder really exposes itself at night and when i do purge that's my bad day and to get back on track the main thing i make sure i do is eat the next day that's the most important thing is you have to continue nourishing your body and in my brain i make this list and it's why food is good for me and why it's going to nourish my body and provide me with energy and the nutrients to continue living and that's the most important thing to me i make sure i get good sleep i make sure i eat i make it a goal that after i eat i don't go to the bathroom whatsoever for at least half an hour to an hour even if i have to pee i kind of just try to stay away but those are just some little things that I do. I do some, you know, personal affirmations. Um, I just try to continue living and try to get back on track as much as I can. The next question I have is, if somebody sleeps too much during the day causing them not to eat, is that an eating disorder? So it's obviously not up to me to say what's an eating disorder and what's not, but if you are just sleeping so much that it causes you to not eat and you're you're not purposefully not eating that would be more of disordered eating rather than eating disorder you may experience disordered eating without actually having an eating disorder and i know that can be a little confusing but it's not up to me to say what's an eating disorder and what's not um i don't have all the information i'm not a doctor but if you are purposefully not eating and you're sleeping to avoid having to do it, I suggest reaching out and seeing a professional and seeing if you can get help. Just remember that your body needs food. You need to nourish yourself. You need to give it energy. You need to give it hope that it can live another day. The next question is, um, what are some ways that helped you out of it and things you do to try and recover? So definitely my family and friends and their support and being honest and reaching out about what I was struggling with 
was a huge thing that motivated me to start recovery and just ensuring that I don't fall into old patterns and habits and making sure that I have a nice routine of waking up and eating and staying out of the bathroom and just continuing to nourish my body and keeping the food in and not resisting eating. Something to distract myself after I eat is a huge thing for me. So often when I eat, I try to do something else. So if I'm eating, maybe afterwards I'll play video games or I'll embroider or do my makeup or anything really. And that is a huge thing for me. The next question is how did you get motivated to eat more? And it's definitely something that comes from within. I think you just need to acknowledge and be certain that your body needs the food. And whether or not I'm hungry or not, I know that my body needs to be nourished. And sometimes I don't eat three meals a day and I'm working on it to try and regulate my eating schedule. But it is hard and I know that, especially with certain things that make you not hungry and make you not want to eat. I know that personally my ADHD medication suppresses my appetite pretty severely and it can just slip my mind in an entire day that I need to eat. But writing down or planning your meals the night before just helps you remember that you have to eat and remind yourself that you are fulfilling your body's need and that's what you need to do and that's what you need to do to survive and thrive. The next question is what not to say to someone with an eating disorder. Now this is gonna be more so based off of like my personal experience because I can't say exactly what you can't say to somebody else with a different type of eating disorder or just a different experience than me but any comment on weight that is very triggering. It's, I, if somebody were to talk to me and I would just say that's like one of the best things to try to avoid, whether it be, oh, you're looking thinner or wow, it looks like you lost weight or, oh, those jeans are tight, you know, anything to do with what my body looks like, because it's not up to somebody else to talk about it it's mine it's not up for somebody else to talk about and that's just a general rule of thumb is probably don't talk to other people about their body and yeah sometimes it can seem like a compliment but you don't know what the person's going through and you don't know whether that's going to affect them in a negative way or not other things are like mentioning how little or how much i'm eating or somebody's eating with an eating disorder um the time that they're eating at, anything revolving around food, saying like, you shouldn't eat that, you should eat this, things like that are rough to deal with. There are thousands of things that you shouldn't say, but those are just a few that came to mind and that are pretty current in my life and that I think people need to know that you should just watch out and you just never know what somebody's going through. So it's just to stay in your own lane is a good rule. <laughs> the next question is about triggers. And it's what are some triggers that people with an eating disorder have or do they have any? Um, again, not up to me to say everybody's experience. But people with eating disorders definitely have triggers. Like I said earlier, any mention about weight, talking about food, talking about calories and like sugar content, stuff like that. Anything like the content of food or how much, how little, comments about weight, about exercise can trigger. There's so many things and it's definitely based off of somebody's personal experience, what triggers them, because everybody with an ED has a different experience and they may or may not be triggered by things, but just again, a rule of thumb kind of avoid topics like that with most people especially if you know if they struggle but you never know if they do or not people behind closed doors can surprise you so that's it for all the questions i wanted to say thank you for watching today 
thank you for listening to me talk about my personal experience and answer a few questions from you guys. I just think it's really important to open conversations about this and have it be more normalized in society so that those who suffer don't feel so alone. I am going to put some links down below if you're looking to have more information, um, reach out for help. I'm going to put some organizations as well as some links to some informational websites in the description box down below so don't forget to look at that if you want. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.